Luka has done about as much as any 23 year old in the game as basketball has ever done. A preseason MVP favorite for the third straight season, Luka has already set records this year by starting off the year with seven straight 30 point games, becoming the first player since Will Chamberlain did it in 1962 to do so. Already a three time All NBA player, Luka's career numbers are insane, averaging nearly 27 points a game over eight rebounds and eight assists. And last year, he led his team to the Western Conference Finals, which at 23 again is absolutely insane. Luka has firmly placed himself as one of the next faces of the league, and his peers also agree. Uh, he's a great player. I mean, the dude can play. He does everything so well. Uh, most exciting player, Luka Doc. He's the most exciting player right now. He's, uh, he's a threat at every level. Yeah. Well, we couldn't stop him. It's really hard to slow him down. He's a handful. It's gonna be a problem. We are a problem. It's it's remarkable and it's real. This this isn't a fluke. This guy's been playing professional since he was 13. He plays like an adult. Oh, you can tell he's been playing pro for a long time. I'm one of those people. I'm like, man, I got I got to see. He played pickup the other day, man. He got done. Yeah, he got done. He got done. He's one of those guys that's really unique. He's not really fast. He's not as athletic as a LeBron James. You see some guys that come in our league and they just play a hundred miles an hour. He just plays at his own pace. You know, they usually say that the game slows down for you, but it's already slow for him. He, he just plays with so much confidence. His game is just so beyond his age. You know, he's just starting himself. He's the one of the best players in the league. The man is averaging 30, 11, and 9 in 13 games so far. I am highly impressed with this guy. I mean, he's arguably the MVP of the league right now. Luke is sensational, man. You know, I haven't seen a dude go from, you know, a top player in the week to MVP candidate and, you know, damn near overnight. So it's just crazy. You know? He's only going to get smarter. That's going to be dangerous for the league. It's unbelievable. Luke is going to be where he is the next 20 years if he wants to. Who knows how high the ceiling is for him. Now, no question about it, Luka has definitely earned the praise he's getting across the league from coaches and players alike, but is his style of play sustainable? Luka is on pace to finish top five all time in usage rate percentage. And for those who are unfamiliar, usage rate calculates what percentage of plays a player was involved in while on the floor for that team. On average, a player will have around 20% usage rate. And look at some of the other names on the list. You got MVP Russ, who is playing with absolutely nobody in OKC. That was after KD left. Then you got 05 06 Kobe. This is the 81 point Kobe. He's playing with nobody. And I know you see Giannis up there as well. Definitely expect to see his usage drop once Chris Middleton gets back as he takes a lot of the scoring low and playmaking low for Milwaukee as well. And that's the problem with the Mavs. They don't have a secondary score or a secondary playmaker that plays off of Luka that helps them create shots for other players on the team. The way this Mavs offense works is very similar to the way the Houston Rockets offense worked when they had James Harden at an MVP level. They kind of space the floor out, have him go one on one, and he's either creating a shot for himself or he's creating a shot, a three point shot, most likely, for somebody else on the team. Or they're putting him in a pick and roll situation with a big, and he's, you know, getting to a spot or he's feeding the big on, on the roll to the bucket. So, very similar to the way the Houston Rockets ran their offense through the whole James Harden era. We see how that worked out. Yeah, James put up some great numbers and won the MVP, even made it to the conference finals one year, but let's be honest, they were not close to a championship. And last season, the Mavs had Jalen Bronson, who did a great job taking pressure off of Luka, especially in the playoffs when Luka was out. He really set his game up, but of course, now he's a New York Knick. Now, Jason Kidd has given some of those playmaking responsibilities to Spencer Dinwiddie, who's balling out this season, don't get me wrong, but in my opinion, he's best served as like a sixth man on a championship level team. In that sixth man role, he can come into the game really focused on scoring and not really so much on getting teammates involved, which he's not the greatest at, like I said, don't get me wrong, he's not bad at it, but in my opinion, he's best served as being that microwave scorer. Now, in the offseason, the Mavs did go out and get Christian Wood, but they currently have him coming off the bench and not really pairing him with Luka. He's getting about the same minutes as Maxi Kleber, which we look at this place is insane. I think Jason Kidd needs to experiment with Luka and Christian Wood in our lineup together, but even if they make that move, I think the Mavs are still very limited offensively. They rely very heavily on Luka, getting them open shots. And if their three-point shooters are hitting shots, of course, it could be a long night for the defense. And they do have some decent shooters. Maxi Kleber, like I mentioned earlier, Bertens. I'm a huge Hardaway fan as well. Also, Dorian Finney-Smith and Reggie Bullock. But these guys can be very streaky. And when cold, it can be a long night for Dallas. And go back to relying on Luka to score. And defenses know that. I mean, we're denying them. I mean, shit, that's what they do to, that's what you do to good scores. I mean, we let the other guys play. They don't really know how to 
dribble or <laughs> create for themselves. So, you know, um, I felt like that slowed the game down for them as well. Um, we just did a good job. We, we know that, you know, the, their team is very limited outside of him. So you heard it there from KD and Kyle Kuzma. Everybody knows you shut Luka down, you shut the Mavs down. You got a great chance to win. The Mavs really underestimated the loss of Jalen Bronson in free agency, only bringing in Compazzo to back up Luka. And again, I'm a fan of Compazzo, so no offense here, but that's not really gonna help Luka out here. They should have run after a high level playmaking guard that can also score the ball or just resign the one they had last year maybe. Cause as you guys can see, as the game goes on, Luka's staff seem to drop, unfortunately. Saw the same thing happen in the playoffs last year and a couple years ago against the Clippers as well. Honestly, probably not his fault. He's probably tired from carrying the team so much and you know creating so much in our offense. So you guys let me know what you think. Are the Mavs in trouble? Should they have signed another off-ball guard to go along with Luka here? Let me know in the comments. Yo, don't miss out on any more of this dope content. Make sure you subscribe and follow, like, share, save, all that good stuff, man. Peace.